Welcome to Watches with Dennis, and today I'm reviewing the H. Moser Pioneer Center Second Funky Blue Black Edition, reference 3200-1205. This watch is from my personal collection. It was purchased used, and I've owned it about a week at this point. Moser was founded in 1928, but the brand's current incarnation was relaunched in 2005. The brand produces roughly 2,000 watches per year and is known for producing many of its own watch components and its often humorous take on watch tropes and trends. According to my calipers, this watch's diameter is 43 millimeters. It has a lug-to-lug distance of 51.1 millimeters. It has a thickness of 14.3 millimeters, and it has a lug width of 22 millimeters. This watch offers 120 meters of water resistance. This is a stainless steel watch, but it has a black DLC coating. The sides of the case extending onto the lugs are scalloped with very pronounced ridges that could be described as severe and or industrial in aesthetic. The other side of the watch features the crown, which is also blackened and is signed with the Moser letter M. The crown has three positions. In position zero, the watch crown is screwed in. The timepiece has its full 120 meters of water resistance. In position one, the movement can be hand wound. And in position two, the watch hacks and the time can be set. Looking at the front of this watch, one can see a blue dial. Moser officially calls this shade of blue funky blue. And as is common with many Moser watches, it is applied in the fume style. So it darkens the closer to the edge that you look. The hour and minute hands are a modified leaf style that are partially skeletonized, whereas the seconds hand is a needle style with a skeletonized counterweight. Beneath the 12 o'clock marker is the Moser brand label, and that is the only text Moser puts on the dial. As noted earlier, this watch is quite thick for a time-only model, and that has really to do with the significantly domed sapphire crystal that protects the dial. Close to the bezel, there are loom markers for each hour marker. The hour and minute hands are also loomed, and Super Luminova is the loom of choice for this watch. The watch does have a display case back showing off the HMCE 200 movement. This is an automatic movement with a bi-directional winding system that operates at 3 Hz, has 27 joules, and offers approximately 72 hours of power reserve. It uses a free-sprung balance. Finishing is also noteworthy as the movement has black polished screws and an engine-turned base plate. The bridges have polished edges and a double-crusted Cote de Genève on top of those bridges. The rotor is black with a sunburst effect at its center where it's mounted. Putting this watch on my time grapher, I get an average across all six positions of plus 1.125 seconds per day. The range of readings were minus 2 seconds per day to plus 3.25 seconds per day. Here you can see what the watch looks like on my wrist. My wrist size is approximately 6.75 inches. The strap is made of vulcanized rubber and features a blackened pin buckle made out of titanium. And in an unusual case, I'm actually in the very last hole on the strap, something I've never faced before. Here is the watch outside on my wrist, so you can get a sense of how it looks in more natural lighting. The Fume dial really plays with the light in any bright environment. So what are my overall thoughts on this watch? The positives I would say are it is comfortable to wear, it is very accurate, and it's one of the best dials I've ever seen. And in terms of negatives, the strap is more for larger wrists, and the domed sapphire rules this out for smaller cuffed shirts. I don't have much in the way of complaints. This is a bigger watch, so you need to go in expecting that, but it does wear relatively compact for its size, I think thanks largely to the curved spring bars for the strap. Even though my wrist size is smaller than average, I normally do not need to use the last hole option on a pin buckle strap, but here I do, and the watch is still a little bit loose, so it's something to be aware of. While there is a lot of sophistication to this watch's look, remember, it is a sports watch. While I imagine this could look pretty good on leather straps, the domed sapphire crystal means this is not just going to slide under any cuff you throw at it, and will thus limit the viability of this watch in those scenarios. Otherwise, though, it's been pretty impressive. The movement is more accurate than I expected, and the watch wears well, even with the strap not being able to be adjusted to my ideal level of tightness. The highlight here, though, as is the case with many Moser watches, is the dial. I think Moser has the best Fume dials in the business, and this watch has a format which is easy to read the time, but is so minimalist otherwise that most of the dial is just there to let you appreciate this funky blue Fume colorway. Thank you for watching this review video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it helps the channel out. 
Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be automatically notified when I release new videos. There are links in the description if you'd like to support the channel via the 99 Cent Club and also an invite to the Discord channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.